but this has such a lilt to it. It reminds me of something. And I, when I first came in, I thought, what is that that's reminding me? Hi, everyone. I'm back. And it's been a wonderful little vacation from this project. And I'm so eager to get back to it. I have been gone for about a month, as many of you know. Um, we've been traveling, visiting friends and family all around Europe. And I just... This is my first day back in the studio. I walked in and found the harp with about three or four strings missing, of course, and because they break from time to time. So I just replaced them. It looks like it needs a haircut now. And they're stretching, and if I have to demo on the harp later, I might have to check the tuning a bit, touch up the new strings. But anyway, here I am. I'm happy to be back, and this morning, my piece of music to listen to is Sun Shower by Chris Cornell. And, well, let's go ahead and dive in and see what I have to learn about it. Oh, by the way, Sun Shower, what, what? Do you know what a Sun Shower is? I had to think for a moment when I heard the title and, and remember, what is a Sun Shower? But it's a, it's a certain phenomenon You've probably experienced it at some point in your life where you're walking outside on a beautiful sunny day and you feel rain on your face. I remember as a child looking up in the sky thinking, is there an airplane up there? Did someone dump a cup of water out of the window or something? <laughs> I learned later that it's something that actually happens where perhaps there's a rainstorm miles away. Your sky is clear, but the wind up higher in the atmosphere blows some of the rain your direction and so you get a little shower even without any clouds above you. Or sometimes it can happen where there's a single cloud dropping rain but the sun is shining at an angle where the cloud never blocks the light of the sun. So it's a unique experience. It happens occasionally. Probably many of you have experienced it in your life. And now this song is Sun Shower. Well, I'm curious how he's going to take it. Christopher John Cornell. I, I remember Chris Cornell. I remember from the project with Carl when we did the preliminary leaps through the decades and I listened to Black Hole Sun and Chris Cornell was the singer there. So I guess I'm returning to something, someone, some voice I have met before. Christopher John Cornell was an American singer, songwriter, and musician best known as the lead vocalist, rhythm guitarist, and primary lyricist for the rock bands Soundgarden and Audio Slave. He also had a solo career and contributed to numerous movie soundtracks. Cornell was the founder and frontman of Temple of the Dog, a one-off tribute band dedicated to his late friend Andrew Wood. That's cool. He made a band as a tribute to a friend. Well, it says a one-off tribute band. Did it just perform once? Did it record? Did it tour? I don't know. I might be curious to dig up a little more information about that. But a band created as a tribute to a friend. How special is that? Several music journalists, fan polls, and fellow musicians have regarded Cornell as one of the greatest rock singers of all time. Cornell is considered one of the one of the key figures of the 1990s grunge movement. Yes, and I remember Black Hole Sun was the example of grunge. He is well known for his extensive catalog as a songwriter, his nearly four octave vocal range, and his powerful vocal belting technique. Across his entire catalog, Cornell sold 14.8 million albums, 8.8 .8 million digital songs, and 300 million on-demand audio streams in the U.S. alone, as well as over 30 million records worldwide. He was nominated for 18 Grammy Awards, winning three. Cornell was ranked number four on the list of heavy metal's all-time top 100 vocalists by Hit Parader, number nine on the list of best lead singers of all time by Rolling Stone, number 80 on the list of the 200 greatest singers of all time by Rolling Stone, and number 12 on MTV's 22 Greatest Voices in Music. I assume that was more 
popular rock music than delving into the classical rates. He was voted rock's greatest singer by readers of Guitar World. Cornell struggled with depression for most of his life. He was found dead in his Detroit hotel room in the early hours of May 18, 2017. That's not so very long ago. After performing at a Soundgarden concert an hour earlier at the Fox Theater, his death was ruled a suicide by hanging. Well, that's a tragic end to such a great voice and and significant contributor to music. Well, I am learning that that's not a particularly rare occurrence in many of these bands. There seems to be a lot of tragedy and a lot of depression and a lot of um, sad ends to famous artists and maybe maybe there's something that draws artists to this kind of music where it seems to help them cope for some time or maybe perhaps since many of these artists are not schooled they don't go through a rigorous training process to prepare for concert life perhaps that might have something to do with it because a, being a public figure and and enduring the concert experience constantly on the road or in the public eye is incredibly grueling and taxing psychologically, emotionally, physically. Um, as a teacher, as a classical teacher and one who helps young people prepare for this kind of life. I'm well aware of the risks and dangers of taking on a career like that and we teachers put a lot of effort into preparing our students for that if that's what they choose. Maybe that's one of the reasons that there's so much of this in the rock world because there historically hasn't been that kind of preparation for this public concert rock musician life. I don't know, it's just a thought that's coming to me now as I'm thinking, here's yet another early suicide tragedy where maybe he would have given us more music if he had been able to live. But anyway, just some thoughts flowing through my mind at the moment. Let's go on and see how this piece of music sounds. Dark as roses and fine. I love that opening. Dum bum. This this intro here, and then I heard when his voice entered entered suddenly. It's the same melody, but this has such a lilt to it. It reminds me of something and I, when I first came in, I thought, what is that that's reminding me? I'm going to have to think and see if I can recall. Where is this sending me? Because there is something incredibly familiar about this. I'm sure there's a piece that I know or that I like a lot that has a similar feel. I'll try to remember. <laughs> I just remembered. Sorry. Back to the beginning. 
there is a a piece of music. I guess it's it's actually a hymn tune, which I heard on a CD once that had a harp accompaniment. The same style of lilt then trum bum dee 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 dum da 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 and it flows so nicely and um this guitar here it, style is reminding me of that particular harp accompaniment pattern. It was years ago that I heard it, but it just came to mind. That's what it was. All right. Um, you know, when I listened to Black Hole Sun, I didn't love that piece of music. Um, and you probably, if you've watched that, you, you probably caught on it. Okay, it was part of the whole history development, but... I didn't love the music. I didn't love his voice in that song. I'd be curious to go back and listen to it now because I'm a bit further into this whole rock journey experience. But in this piece of music, I notice his voice having this incredible clarity and point and power to it. And it's beautiful. I guess it suits this whole sun shower quality. There's something very, very cutting about it. And yet, it's not unpleasant to listen to. I want to back up. There were a couple of things I noticed along the way. First of all, in this opening. This, yes. These little I'm not exactly sure what drum head or drum noise it is, <laughs> but this little chick, chick that is being struck here. It's really nice because we have this guitar dum bum 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 da dum ba dum bum, which is so lilting and fluid and comfortable. And then out of that, we just have this extra little chink, chink, almost as if it's an unexpected raindrop on your face on a sunny day. Where did that come from? I don't see any clouds. Drop right on your cheek. <laughs> this little wow 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 sound it must be coming from the guitar or do they have synthesizer in here I'm not sure but probably the guitar and like the chink chink it's a very little additional element that gives it a bit of a liquid sound just like water and so we heard these little raindrops ching, ching, dropping on our cheek, on our forehead, just out of the blue, literally. And then as we go along and we're kind of meditating on this whole concept of, of the, well, the lyrics are saying, I feel your healing and your sting again. That must be the rain. I hear you laughing and my soul is saved. On forgotten graves you cry. And then now we're getting in on forgotten um, crawl like ivy up my spine, through my nerves and into my eyes. Ivy is maybe a symbol of, of 
growth and greenery and new life and, and we feel it traveling through our body, kind of freshening us. Cuts like anguish or recollection, recollections of better days gone by, but it's all right. When you're all in pain and you feel the rain come down, oh, it's all right. This idea that this, this unexpected rain shower somehow even if it even if it's a bit pulling us towards painful recollections at the same time it brings a freshness and a life to our experience unexpectedly out of out of nowhere and so this whole meditation is happening and in the background wow 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 that funny wobbly liquid sound which again suits this whole idea of rain and water and liquid and and that it is just present I'm noticing something about the music, about the melody, which is that's kind of where we're living. And then at the end of the verse, we descend a bit, it just lets us rest. But it's a very subtle twist on a, on a familiar line of music. I want to hear that again. Yeah, so we have... Um, that's kind of living right around F sharp. Well, we're in the key of D, so those are the first three notes of our D scale, and essentially the D chord. We're on the lower half of the D chord. That is how we come to the end of the verse. We've been living in this kind of D world and suddenly we're placed on what we musicians call the leading note, the leading tone. Um, and it's a very important special pitch. It's the seventh note of the scale. Well, it helps us transition to the dominant chord, the five chord, but it also can pull us back to the home as well. So it's a nice place to, to rest for a moment without coming to a full close, a full stop. And it's so nice the way he just settles down. I love how his voice gets so expressive and and anguished in that moment when you're all in pain. But it's alright when you're all in pain and you feel the rain come down. Oh, it's alright when you find your Whoa! 
details that are that are put in the background of this primarily voice and guitar piece of music. Just bits of texture. Add some depth and dimension. And well, this is a special moment in the song too. It's all right, though your garden's gray. I know all your graces someday will flower in a sweet sun shower. Knowing that he dealt with depression makes me appreciate this even more because I recognize that he he's created this from his own experience and this idea of of we have our dark days, but having experienced many dark days, we know that we will walk through them and we know that at some point we will have a little bit of lightning. We will have a little bit of life come back to us. It might be just a moment, just momentary, like a sweet sun shower, but the sweetness there. And, and there's this element of hope and and commitment to move towards those moments, which I'm finding in the lyrics here. They don't strike me as something that somebody really tried to do something really deep and profound, but at the same time, they're really quite evocative and, and expressive of an experience. And they work really well with this music because the music is also not trying to be incredibly profound. And yet it is bringing all these little details to light, the little raindrop on our cheek, the, the liquid element of water, the life-giving quality of it. And then this little ch -ch 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 texture, which again, we could, we could put some interpretation on it. I don't think it's meant to have a particular interpretation, but, but the, the textural elements which come in and this guitar, which in this moment of, of, of hopefulness, of knowing that even though the garden is all gray, there will come a day when it will flower in a sweet sun shower. Listen to what the guitar is doing in that moment. Here we go. Here's the sweet sun shower. In that sweet sun shower, notice how it's descending. Again, not really creating music that mimics the shower, but at the same time, music that expresses qualities. It's light, it's sweet, and it has this descending quality as if it's dropping down, coming down. And at the same time, there is, there is a, a sort of happiness to it because the sunlight is shining through and we can almost think of if the shower lasts long enough and I look around, maybe I'll find a rainbow somewhere. Nice bit of bass added in here, fills it out.
like the depth and the richness. I like the bass as it comes in in that verse and and the the richness and the fullness that it gives the music. Let's listen to a bit of that again. And this, the bass has been doing its nice work throughout. Yeah, da 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 dum, dum da dum, da da dum. And then in this pause here at the end, right here, everything comes to a rest. And we might think that, okay, it's time to rest. Just like. Just like in the earlier verses where we came to a resting point and we were ready for what comes next. But here, as we start to rest, here's what I really like is this moment of the bass saying, I'm not quite done. Yeah, da, 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 dum. And it gives this ascending, ascending moment. Yeah, da, 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 dum. As if it's lifting us up, elevating us up, elevating us towards what comes next but it's a it's a very positive contribution to the not only the music but the emotional impact effect that the music has on us And then we have again. And it carries us right into the sun shower again. Notice. This section is so interesting the way he's using a scale. Again, it's so interesting to notice in this piece of music how he uses ascending patterns to give this uplifting quality to the music and how he uses descending patterns to kind of calm us and give a soothing quality. And in this little passage here, what we have happening in, in the guitar, let's listen to it again. You hear that, you hear this, um, pattern of built on 
descending lines at the same time with a little, which I can't do on the harp, he's just sliding, warping the note a bit to get this upper note. It's beautiful and it adds such a nice um, element to the music there. Now we're climbing up again. You hear dum da dum da dum dum. And everything is lifting. Now we're descending again. Climbing up again. I love the textural quality of that last section of the music. Well, this little passage, dum, 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 really featured in that whole section, behind and within everything else that was happening. And for some reason, my ears are drawn towards it. I guess, I guess because it, I feel like it adds so much to the musical content in that moment. It's something we hadn't heard before in the music, so it's fresh, it's new. At the same time, it's not invasive, intrusive. It, it simply enhances and opens and expands this, this whole experience in the music. And everything else is intensifying. His voice, the, the drums, the other guitars around, Everything is 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 really um, getting into a a groove and a a rock beat pulse drive towards the end, and within that we have this little wave of softness that is present and it helps shape the harmony and. It adds a counter melody to what the voice is singing. Let's listen to that again. And now it starts to climb. Climbing upwards, upwards, upwards. So we've had this lifting. And now it starts to descend. Thing. Now we're climbing again, and then we descend. And underneath this, so so now your ears are picking it out, and you can hear it. And underneath this, and around this, we have the the O oh of the voice and these 
textural drums, which are adding so much as well to the whole overall sound experience, the texture of what's coming through here. Face there. And the voice. That's rising again. Now it's descending. And the face is rising and falling underneath. Now we hear the drums again. And that little recollection of what came earlier in the music, bum, 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 which was the sun shower. Well, I have to say that this listening experience of Chris Cornell has been so much more enjoyable than my first exposure with Black Hole Sun. Probably the style has something to do with it, probably also the fact that I am now more familiar with rock music and beginning to be more comfortable in, in this sound world and in this genre style of, of music and able to relate to it better. I enjoyed this piece of music and it reminds me, perhaps strangely, but it reminds me, it makes me recall another composer, poet, uh, lyricist from long before rock music. He's English and his name is William Cooper. If you are, if you are deeply churched, you might know the name. It's it's a name that is not so well known in, in modern music, but he also struggled with depression his entire life. In fact, insanity. He spent multiple episodes in an asylum for his insanity. He made multiple attempts on his own life as a Christian, which is, which is you know, a bit of a conflict for many Christians this idea that he could be a Christian and still have these struggles, but it is true. And it's a wonderful example of, of how it doesn't matter your, your background, your religion, your perspective on life. We have some, some of us have these mental challenges, these psychological challenges, these struggles with depression. And the thing that made me remember William Cooper now is because in his lyrics, which he wrote, he's known as a writer of hymns, and, and in, in the hymns which he wrote, the same quality of, of hopefulness, of looking for the bright side, of reminding oneself that, that the dark periods will bring a a renewing, a refreshing, a reviving in one's outlook, perspective on life. I feel like in many ways, perhaps Chris Cornell and William Cooper might have been kindred spirits in that regard. And it's an interesting connection to make because they're so far apart from each other time-wise, style-wise, their entire 
world perspective has to be so different because they're from completely different worlds and yet they both have this very very determined um, quality in what they've written to look for and to strive towards towards life towards towards the sunlight towards the refreshing of of the sun shower and for some reason i i am brought to this idea that they fit together both of them they could sit side by side and these lyrics and some of william cooper's hymn texts could sit side by side and they carry the same message and this message which i find here is this striving for positivity and knowing that Chris Cornell had these struggles makes them all the more potent and and it's sad that he ended up losing the battle as he did but at the same time I see that he left such a mark of of hope and positivity and and encouragement for others who whether it's something as serious as depression or simply a tough day for whatever reason to have this kind of artistic expression to give voice to those feelings and at the same time to uplift us and and help us move forwards is really beautiful so I appreciated this music, not only because I enjoyed it, um, but because I appreciate the message and the impact it has on those who listen to it. Well, there we have the sun shower, and my second experience paying attention to Chris Cornell, and perhaps I, well, not perhaps, it's true. After this experience, I am more eager to explore more of his work than I was after the first Black Hole Sun. And I am also interested to go back and listen to Black Hole Sun again, having heard this song now. I'll see you next time.